section ten of the book of enoch translated by robert henry charles the book of the courses of the heavenly luminaries chapter seventy two through chapter eighty two chapter seventy two the sun chapter seventy two the book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven the relations of each according to their classes their dominion and their seasons according to their names and places of origin and according to their months which uriel the holy angel who was with me who is their guide showed me and he showed me all their laws exactly as they are and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity till the new creation is accomplished which dureth till eternity and this is the first law of the luminaries the luminary the sun has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven and its setting in the western portals of the heaven and i saw six portals in which the sun rises and six portals in which the sun sets and the moon rises and sets in these portals and the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead six in the east and six in the west and all following each other in accurately corresponding order also many windows to the right and left of these portals and first there goes forth the great luminary named the sun and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire the chariot on which he ascends the wind drives and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate literally that portal and shines in the face of the heaven in this way he rises in the first month in the great portal which is the fourth those six portals in the cast and in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season when the sun rises in the heaven he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven and during this period the day becomes daily longer and the night nightly shorter to the thirtieth morning on that day the day is longer than the night by a ninth part and the day amounts exactly to ten parts and the night to eight parts and the sun rises from that fourth portal and sets in the fourth and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings and rises from it and sets in the fifth portal and then the day becomes longer by two parts and amounts to eleven parts and the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts and it returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises and sets in the sixth portal one and thirty mornings on account of its sign on that day the day becomes longer than the night and the day becomes double the night and the day becomes twelve parts and the night is shortened and becomes six parts and the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer and the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises from it and sets thirty mornings and when thirty mornings are accomplished the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes eleven parts and the night seven and the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west and goes to the east and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal on that day the day decreases by two parts and amounts to ten parts and the night to eight parts and the sun goes forth from that fifth portal and sets in the fifth portal of the west and rises in the fourth portal for one and thirty mornings on account of its sign and sets in the west on that day the day is equalized with the night and becomes of equal length and the night amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises thirty mornings in the third portal and sets in the west in the third portal and on that day the night becomes longer than the day and night becomes longer than night and day shorter than day till the thirtieth morning and the night amounts exactly to ten parts and the day to eight parts and the sun rises from that third portal and sets in the third portal in the west and returns to the east 
and for thirty mornings rises in the second portal in the east and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven and on that day the night amounts to eleven parts and the day to seven parts and the sun rises on that day from the second portal and sets in the west in the second portal and returns to the east into the first portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the first portal in the west of the heaven and on that day the night becomes longer and amounts to the double of the day and the night amounts exactly to twelve parts and the day to six and the sun has therewith traversed the divisions of his orbit and turns again on those divisions of his orbit and enters that portal thirty mornings and sets also in the west opposite to it and on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part and the night has become eleven parts in the day seven parts and the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east and returns on those his divisions of his orbit for thirty mornings rising and setting and on that day the night decreases in length and the night amounts to ten parts and the day to eight and on that day the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the west of the heaven on that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly as to its days three hundred and sixty four and the length of the day and of the night and the shortness of the day and of the night arise through the course of the sun these distinctions are made literally they are separated so it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter and this is the law and the course of the sun and his return as often as he returns sixty times and rises in other words the great luminary which is named the sun for ever and ever and that which thus rises is the great luminary and is so named according to its appearance according as the lord commanded as he rises so he sets and decreases not and rests not but runs day and night and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon but as regards size they are both equal chapter seventy three and after this law i saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary which is named the moon and her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind and light is given to her in definite measure and her rising and setting change every month and her days are like the days of the sun and when her light is uniform in other words full it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun and thus she rises and her first phase in the east comes forth on the thirtieth morning and on that day she becomes visible and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises and the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part and her whole circumference is empty without light with the exception of one seventh part of it and the fourteenth part of her light and when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof and she sets with the sun and when the sun rises the moon rises with him and receives the half of one part of light and in that night in the beginning of her morning in the commencement of the lunar day the moon sets with the sun and is invisible that night with the fourteen parts and the half of one of them and she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun and in her remaining days she becomes bright in the remaining thirteen parts chapter seventy four and i saw another course a law for her and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution and all these uriel the holy angel who is the leader of them all showed to me and their positions and i wrote down their positions as he showed them to me and i wrote down their months as they were and the appearance of their lights till fifteen days were accomplished in single seventh parts she accomplishes all her light in the east and in single seventh parts accomplishes all her darkness in the west 
and in certain months she alters her settings and in certain months she pursues her own peculiar course in two months the moon sets with the sun in those two middle portals the third and the fourth she goes forth for seven days and turns about and returns again through the portal where the sun rises and accomplishes all her light and she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth and when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal she goes forth seven days until she goes forth from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal and accomplishes all her light and she recedes and enters into the first portal in eight days and she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal from which the sun goes forth thus i saw their position how the moon rose and the sun set in those days and if five years are added together the sun has an overplus of thirty days and all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years when they are full amount to three hundred and sixty four days and the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days in five years six days every year come to thirty days and the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of thirty days and the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity but complete the years with perfect justice in three hundred and sixty four days in three years there are one thousand ninety two days and in five years one thousand eight hundred and twenty days so that in eight years there are two thousand nine hundred and twelve days for the moon alone the days amount in three years to one thousand sixty two days and in five years she falls fifty days behind in other words to the sum of one thousand seven hundred and seventy there is to be added one thousand and sixty two days and in five years there are one thousand seven hundred and seventy days so that for the moon the days in eight years amount to two thousand eight hundred and thirty two days for in eight years she falls behind to the amount of eighty days all the days she falls behind in eight years are eighty and the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun which rise from the portals through which it the sun rises and sets thirty days chapter seventy five and the leaders of the heads of the thousands who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four intercalary days being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year and these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year and owing to them men go wrong therein for those luminaries truly render service on the world stations one in the first portal one in the third portal of the heaven one in the fourth portal and one in the sixth portal and the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate three hundred and sixty four stations for the signs and the times and the years and the days the angel uriel showed to me whom the lord of glory hath set for ever over all the luminaries of the heaven in the heaven and in the world that they should rule on the face of the heaven and be seen on the earth and be leaders for the day and the night in other words the sun moon and stars and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven in like manner twelve doors uriel showed me open in the circumference of the sun's chariot in the heaven through which the rays of the sun break forth and from them is warmth diffused over the earth when they are opened in their appointed seasons and for the winds and the spirit of the dew when they are opened standing open in the heavens at the ends as for the twelve portals in the heaven at the ends of the earth out of which go forth the sun moon and stars and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west there are many windows open to the left and right of them and one window at its appointed season produces warmth corresponding as these do to those doors from which the stars come forth according as he commanded them 
and wherein they set corresponding to their number and i saw chariots in the heaven running in the world above those portals in which revolve the stars that never set and one is larger than all the rest and it is that that makes its course through the entire world end of section ten read by c j plogue